Hi Aquarius, this is Teresa from Tarot by T. Welcome to September and your love taroscope. I'm getting ready to do this reading. Before I do that, I want to just create some sacred space around this reading and call in some good energy. And I want to say thank you also for liking and subscribing to my channel. Thank you for your comments. I really appreciate um, you taking the time out to leave comments. And I read them all, and I really, um, I appreciate the feedback. It, it makes me, um, it helps me to realize that, um, to keep doing this, you know. Because <laughs> if I feel like no one cares or no one's being helped by these readings, it's like, why am I doing this? But So when I hear that, you know, these readings have resonated with people and they're helping you, it um, gives me the incentive to keep doing it and to keep going on, because I feel like it has some value for people. So let us see what's happening in your life. We're having, okay, so this month, what does Aquarius need to know about love and life in general? We have a full moon in Pisces, and that's affecting your second house, and then a new moon in Virgo that will be affecting the eighth house. So the second house is a house of security, self-worth, what you value the money you earn, and the eighth house is other people's resources. It's also the house of transformation, sex, uh, you know, intimacy. Actually, not sex, not so much as a sexual pleasure act. It's more of an intimacy. So you could have a new beginning um, where, you know, that involves self-worth and intimacy. Something is ending and something new is beginning with the new moon. Um, but we'll get to that. We'll see what the cards say. Um, what does Aquarius need to know about love? What does Aquarius need to know about love for the month of September? Love and anything else that might be important. Any other messages that Aquarians need to know for September? May only the highest forces be present to ensure that the truth be told. Okay, let's see what you got. The Queen of Swords. The Ten of Swords. The Magician. The Eight of Cups. The Two of Cups. The Seven of Pentacles. The Ten of Cups. The Ace of Pentacles. The Devil. And the Queen of Pentacles. Hmm, this is interesting. Okay, so... The Queen of Swords... Okay, now this could be you. Um, because the swords represent air signs. And, um... The air sign in this situation could be... It could be air, um... Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. So it could... And it also, as the first card, when a court card comes up as the first card in a Celtic cross... A lot of times it represents the person involved in the reading. So I would say that you have been, the, the energy of the Queen of Swords is she's very independent. Now this could be male or female, so uh, depending on your situation. Someone who's been hurt, who's been through a lot in life. She's had a lot of loss. She's done gone through a lot of trauma and crises in her life. Um, she has felt betrayal. Um, she's just been... So it's caused her to be hard or or distant. She doesn't... So she has built this wall around her. Um, and so sometimes she comes across as someone who is unemotional or uncompassionate. But that's not really how she feels on the inside. It's just the mask on the outside for, that she puts up for protection. And so you might be, have been giving off a vibe of, you know, stay away, I don't need anybody, I can handle it myself, you know, because Aquarians are very independent. They don't like to feel that they need others. They, they're like, you know, I don't want to need anybody, I want to be able to do my own thing. But you know what, we all need someone and you have to sometimes drop your guard so that you can get close to someone. And so this is something, you know, especially with this full moon coming in, Pisces in your second house, the issues coming to a head 
could be ones of self-worth. You know, am I worthy of love? What am I worth as a, an employee even? You know, am I getting paid what I'm worth? Am I getting the love that I, I deserve? So you're going to be dealing with these issues. What am I worth? Am I getting enough? And what do I value? So some project may be coming to a, a close, um, dealing with some financial. So some money might be coming in if you finish some job because you have the Ten of Swords here. So that's like an ending of a cycle. And actually, this is good because all the cards that follow this are uh, positive. So the Ten of Swords means something that's been troubling you, something that's been either worrying you or stressing you um, is coming to an end. And... With the Ten of Swords in the cross position, you can't... So you may have felt in some instances, you may feel... You just can't give this any more energy. So it could be a relationship that you feel, you know, I've tried, I've done everything I can to make this relationship work, and it's just not working, and I just need to move on. Um, it could be a career situation where you feel like I've run, I've come to the end of the line with this career. I just don't want, I don't want to do it anymore. You know, it used to mean something to me, but now it doesn't. And there could be betrayal, feelings of betrayal connected with this tent. Because the person is down with the knife, you know, the swords are in there stabbing them in the back. So you could feel like someone close to you has betrayed you in some way or stabbed you in the back. And once you realize, you know, you might have been seeing a relationship or not seeing the reality of the relationship. And then when you see the truth, you decide, okay, you know what? I'm not going to give this any more energy. I have to stop giving this energy because it's been hurting me. It's hurting me. And I am worthy of more. I deserve more. Um, and so that's good because something that has been, like whatever's no longer serving you is coming to an end. Whether it's a career situation or a job or a relationship, it's coming to an end so that you can invite something better into your life, so that you can open up and attract the new, attract something that's a better fit. The magician here in the past, you could have been de dealing with someone who was kind of... Um, Um, a manipulator with words. Someone who's like, you know, all talk and no action, you know, blah, blah, blah. They promise you everything. They deliver nothing. Um, so that's, and you're deciding that you're going to walk away because you have the eight of cups here. Because the, the magician could be like a slick, a fast talker, slick person, someone who's really good with the communication, but they twist things. And they use they use words to manipulate people and to get them to do what they want. And you might be finally, you know, catching on to this person and thinking, you know, I'm not going to play this game anymore. I'm just not going to play it. And so the Eight of Cups is you represent someone walking away from something that they once cared very much about because they want something that has more meaning. Because this no longer has meaning in my life anymore. I want to feel more fulfilled and I want this relationship to feel to have more of a spiritual component. It's not enough to just have fun and be with someone. I want it to have meaning. I want a relationship that is deeper, not just superficial. This come, sometimes could be superficial. You know, you could be dating someone that's a lot of fun, good talker, but you want to go deeper and you just can't do it with this person. Um, the other way it could play out, and all, well, okay, let me just do the love first. <laughs> the Two of Cups, though, is in your future. So there's potential that you're moving away from something that's no longer working and you're moving towards something that is a better fit. The Two of Cups is can feel like a soulmate partnership. Um, and it could be a romance or it could even just be a good friendship where you're really seeing eye to eye with this person and you're saying, you know, we, we have a lot in common. We think the same way. We have the same goals. We have the same values. So you could be meeting someone in September, um, and if not in September, then definitely by the end of this year, because I'm seeing a time card here. Um, 
so things may start in September. Like you may have to finish something old. You might have to get out of a negative situation. You have to get out of a stagnant. You have to decide. You're going to be making a decision to stop giving your energy to something that's no longer serving you. And once you do that, once you make that decision, then you're going to... It's, you're sending a message out to the universe. Okay, I'm ready for something better. I'm ready for the next step. And the universe is already... This is the, the card that falls in this position. Um, is not something that's... It's kind of just started to form. So you're sending your thought, um, your request to the universe, and the universe is responding by saying, okay, here's this relationship potential coming. But you have to really be serious about ending what's no longer serving you. And then we'll send you, you know, you're going to, then you'll start attracting. And it's not, you know, it has nothing to do with like judgment or punishment or, you know, reward. I mean, people think like there's this God on a cloud saying, you know, you, okay, you get this, you get that, you don't get this, you don't get it. It has to do with vibration and it has to do with what you're ready for. As long as you're tied to the past and tied to something that's not good for you, you're not going to vibrate the energy that's going to attract something better because you're going to have your energy wrapped up in something that's not working. So the minute you say you close the door and say, I don't want this anymore. I'm done. I'm and, and, and you're serious about it and you really start taking action to get into a different situation. That's when you're going to start to see because you're going to be in a different place. That's when you're going to start to see results because it's going to just closing that door is going to put you on a different level. And, you know, the goal of our lives is to progress, is, con is to continual improvement. We're a work in progress. Our lives are a work in progress. Um, but you can't pro progress if you stay stuck in something, if you keep holding on to what's no longer working. So here's this Two of Cups. That's opportunity to partner with someone that you really vibe, you know, you have good vibes with. You have... A good connection is, there's potential for a good connection. So you could be meeting someone in September. And you're going to be like, hey, this is someone I could really relate to. And the Seven of Pentacles, because um, you're going to be planting seeds. This is a card about planting seeds, the Seven of Pentacles. And wondering how they're going to grow. Are they going to grow? Um, here's my garden. My life is my garden. I'm planting all these seeds. These are my plans. This is what I'm expecting. I want this, this, and this, and I'm going to start creating action plans. I'm going to start taking action toward my goal. You're not going to sit and wait for something to be dropped on your doorstep like, you know, the stalk delivering a baby. You're going to start making plans. And you're going to be wondering, okay, I'm making plans. I'm doing all this stuff. It's like going to the gym. When am I going to see results? You know, when am I going to lose that those five pounds? Or when am I, my waist going to get shorter, you know, narrower? <laughs> when am I going to fit into that... Those skinny jeans. So, Ten of Cups. Now, what's blocking me? It's in your negative thinking sector. You have the potential for wonderful, for love. This is the love card. This is the love that's more than sex. It's the love that's based on friendship, that's based on stability, genuine care, concern, being surrounded by people who really care about you. And you can have that. But it's in your negative thinking sector. So you have to stop saying, oh, that'll never happen to me. You have to stop the negative self-talk. You have to end that. I, the feeling of isolation. You have to let go of your past pain and your betrayal. You know, that was the old you. That was the past. You've got the, ten, the magician, that, which means I have all the tools I need for success. I just have to focus on the outcome. And visualize good things coming into my life. This is a card of also manifestation, visualize, creative visualization. The way this person performs his magic trick, it's not magic. It's just that he knows that his thoughts create his reality. And so if you're thinking, if you're stuck in the past and all your betrayals and all the heartache and all the, what are you attracting? You're going to attract more of that. But if you start thinking and suspicion, you know, oh, I can't trust anybody. I'm going to only get hurt. Why even bother? I'm just going to get hurt. You know, this, these guys are all, you know, blah, blah, blah. If you start thinking like, no, I can be loved. I am worthy of love. People love me. I'm a good person. I, I, I am, you know, I have a beauty that people can relate to. 
I mean, Aquarius, you are so like creative and so you have this genius, um, this vision and create an intellectual curiosity and innovative thinking. The world needs Aquarians. I mean, we'd be stuck in some boring old routine if it wasn't for Aquarius breaking us out and thinking outside the box and bringing all these new things to our lives. So you have all this talent. You have to use it. Don't be afraid of it. Get your work. I mean, I know that the world may not be ready for Aquarius because, you know, Aquarians, they have a vision for the future. And when they share that vision with the with the more conservative types, they're like, what are you, crazy? They look at Aquarius like you're from, like, another planet. But you can't let that deter you because they're just not ready for your message. You have this vision. You have to hold on to that. Anyway, and you have to start saying, yes, I am worthy of love. And this is what this full moon is going to do for you. This full moon, new moon. It's you saying, enough with me thinking poorly of myself, doubting my abilities, doubting my worth. It's time for me to claim my value. It's time for me to stop, put an end to all that negative self-talk and start to say yes. You know, wake up every morning and, and in front of the mirror say, I love you. You are worthy. You have value. You can, People love me. You know, say that to yourself. You'll see the difference. And so there's love here. You just have to let it in. And you have to start visualizing like, yes, this is possible for me. I can have this. Yes. I can say yes to love, say yes to success, say yes to being paid what you're worth, say yes to getting the love um, that you deserve. And here in your environment, the Ace of Pentacles, this is money coming in. Money coming in. Whether it's, and it's also tangible success. So it could be a job offer that pays more money. It could be um, that you're, you know, whatever it is that you're, you're, you're getting money from some source, whether you're um, getting an inheritance, getting a payout from some insurance thing, because the, uh, the, sec uh, the second and eighth houses, the eighth house represents, you know, uh, insurance payout, tax payout, inheritance, money. It's not so much money that you earn. It's more of money that you win or you could even be <laughs> buy a lotto ticket. Um, it could also mean the eighth house could also be uh, your partner's money. So if you're in a relationship, your partner may get a job that pays more suddenly and you have more income at your disposal. Um, but with any, in any case, the Ace of Pentacles, there's financial support for you as well as love. So you have love and money coming. And now in your wish fulfillment here, you have the, you have the, uh, the Devil card. So the Devil card is a card it's now this position is wishes and fears the devil card is a card of passion desire what is it that you really desire but it could also be addiction so is there for some of you are you addicted to something that you can't let go of do you need help getting rid of it and it doesn't have to be drugs or alcohol it can be it could be a relationship a sexual relationship you know, the person's not, maybe this person's not the best person for you, but, you know, the sex is great and you just can't leave, you know, whatever. Um, or it could be that you have a fear of intimacy because the devil card is fear also. Am I afraid of getting too close to someone because I remember all the past heartaches and I built this wall around me and I, I'm afraid that if I get involved with someone and if I give my heart, I'm just going to get it broken again? I mean, that could be another thing that you have to, the devil is like, you have to look deeper and release these things that are from your subconscious that are blocking you. The devil represents um, hurdles to overcome. The devil represents, for the most part, it represents fear. Fear is what causes a lot of our problems. We're afraid in some capacity. And so we overcompensate by either building up walls, keep us separate from people. We're afraid of being hurt. We're afraid of getting too involved. We're going to lose our freedom. Especially Aquarians, you know, you love your freedom. If I get caught up in this relationship, are they going to make too many demands on me and I'm going to have to, like, give up, you know, my Friday night with the guys or, you know, or the girls or, you know, I'm not going to be able to do things with the people, with my friends anymore. I'm going to be in this relationship. I mean, because Aquarians need a lot of freedom in a relationship. So, but your fears are coming up. 
you're going to have this potential for love and the potential for true intimacy. And that's very scary. Um, especially with the new moon in your eighth house, that's the house of intimacy and transformation. So you could have, you could meet someone that could really change your life. That could be a very intense attraction. That's another thing that the devil could represent. Chemistry, strong chemistry. So you can meet someone that you could really have. I mean, if you've been kind of like in superficial relationships because you're afraid of commitment or afraid of getting hurt. So you date someone you know you could never love or you could never get close to. This may change in September. You might meet someone that you could really have a genuine connection with and it scares you. And so don't let the fear stop you from claiming the love that you deserve. Don't let fear stop you from claiming the perfect job that pays you, you know, the money that you deserve. You have to, this is a season of claiming, you know, you have to claim this. Um, you have to start, you know, valuing yourself so that you can invite these things and let go of the past. Let go. Of, this is all ending. Your sorrows, your, uh, all that sense of betrayal, that, that is the old life fading. Let it fade. The new life has love in it and financial security and creativity. The magician is, you know, you may want to experiment with writing. Um, get it, tap into that, you know, maybe you're a good writer or you want to do something creative, um, using words, using social media, using, you know, the internet. And the outcome here is the queen of pentacles. So this could be someone that you're partnering with. You might find someone like of a, that's an earth sign. And that could be Taurus, uh, Virgo, or Capricorn. And this person is forward thinking. They're thinking of the future. They're looking toward the future. And this could also be you. Sometimes card, court cards are, very, are a little bit complex in a tarot reading. Sometimes they represent people, other people. And sometimes they represent qualities within us that we need to develop or tap into. And sometimes they represent both. So I like to read the both. So you, not only could you be partnering with a, with a queen of pentacles, an earth sign, or someone very down to earth, very practical, very good with money, good with um, good ideas, but it could also mean tapping into that within yourself. You know, where can I build something that, you know, based on practical ideas, not like fantasy thinking, but let me have a real plan and execute it. And the other thing with the Queen of Pentacles is sometimes the Queen of Pentacles, can, she has a lot of talent, but she can doubt her ability at times. So if that sounds like you, you need to stop doubting yourself. You've got the talent. This is the magician. This is in your reading. Um, you've been successful in the past in various ways. But maybe whatever you've been involved in is no longer fulfilling and you want to move on to something that's more, that speaks to who you are. You're changing. And we're all changing. You know, we're supposedly, we're, uh, we're supposed to be moving to a new dimension. We're supposed to be becoming homo luminous. You know, our energies are being, you know, we're getting all these energies coming in and it's changing us. And so our needs are changing. Our consciousness is changing. And so the things that we did with the old consciousness no longer fit. And now we're ready to embrace the new consciousness and the new world. So to do that, you have to let go of the old, the pain, the heartache, the negative thinking, the judgment, the suspicion, the fear. That's got to fall by the wayside so that you can invite the love and the abundance and not be afraid of it. It's a new ball game. Um, so with this Ace of Pentacles, this is a time card also. The Ace of Pentacles represents December, January, February. So you could be dealing with this um, in December and January. Probably January because Mercury will be going retrograde in, September, in December. So I think that nothing really gets initiated. Mercury slows things down. So, But money's coming in. You could ha either find a new job in January, December, or, or February of next year. Or December, January. Um... Or a relationship that really works this time. That brings you more love and more security. More of a feeling of security. And more passion. This is a new beginning. You know, you, we've already, you've already had the eclipse last month in your relationship axis. The new moon eclipse in Leo. 
that's in you, that was in your seventh house. So now the next thing is, okay, um, the next thing is, what do I value? What's important to me? How can I get that into my life? How can I get more of that? Whether it's money, security, love, it all starts with what I think of myself. What am I worth? That's the critical question. And when you start to feel more confident and saying, I am worth more, I am worth, yes, I can be paid this amount of money. Yes, I can get this person, this relationship, and that really loves me. I don't have to be always like, just not getting enough or, you know, I can have fulfillment in love. I can have fulfillment in my career and in my life. And I am worthy of it. I am worthy of it. That's what you should be saying to yourself in September. I am worthy for it. I am. I deserve abundance. I deserve love. I am worthy. Um, so don't let the insecurities. This is you know you have to. You might be expressing the queen energy where you're feeling insecure about your abilities. Can I? Can I do this? Am I good enough? Um, yes, you are. That's what you need to tell yourself. So I see good things coming. For you, Aquarius, um, the end of a cycle that, you know, was not bringing you joy and new beginnings that are going to bring you love and joy and money and abundance and security. Um, look at this Ten of Cups. That's a love. That's a beautiful card. There's a rainbow at the end of the road here. It's like a dream fulfilled. So start thinking positive. And the Ace, opportunity security, financial abundance, and the two, soulmate energy, connection, partnership, and the devil, intimacy, passion. Just don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid to let your guard down and to embrace passion. You're not too old. It's not too late. You know, everybody says, oh, it's not going to happen for me. You know, blah, blah. You're never too old and it's never too late to begin again and to embrace a new beginning that brings more joy into your life. So I hope this reading was a help to you, and I wish you only the best, abundance, love, and passion for September, and release the fear and release the past. It's a new you and a new day. So I will talk to you again, Aquarius, in October. Enjoy September. Bye now.